This is Black Sheep Radio, WOOL 91.5 in the southern Vermont and New Hampshire broadcast area and streaming worldwide on the web from wool.fm. The Roots on the River Music Festival is coming back here again in Bellows Falls in the wee small parts of the beginning of June, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 3rd through the 5th. All the info is online at rootsontheriver.com. Going to play a song by one of the performers who will be on the big stage up on the hill. This is called Drive by Lara Herskovich, and we're going to have her on the phone when we come back.
was Lara Herskovich with her song Drive. And here's Lara Herskovich herself. Hello. Hello. This is a return engagement for you at Roots. It is. It is. I'm really happy to be back. It's a very special festival, great location, wonderful community, and I'm thrilled to be returning again this year. Every once in a while, they'll have somebody back who really connected with the crowd, who they really like. If you missed her the first time, here's your second chance. Yeah, it's going to be a whole lot of fun, and actually this time I'm going to bring my my good friend Glenn Ross, who's a wizard fingerstyle guitar player, to accompany me. I'll have a new record out, so I'll be playing a bunch of those songs, and it's going to be great. Because everything has to be pigeonholed, I guess, your music's been described as modern folk with shades of blues, jazz, and pop, which is probably probably fair enough, but it really only scratches the surface of what you're about. Yeah, talking about genres is always a, a fun conversation. I, um, I'm definitely in the American contemporary folk singer-songwriter branch of the tree. I love all American folk music. That's the original writing that I do, and... I really weave in a whole wide range of themes and topics, some of which are personal, some of which are more global and social justice uh, related. In my most recent album is all weaving in and around themes related to mass incarceration through storytelling as um, citizens of Vermont are, are well aware and very actively involved in trying to make the world a better place. This is our civil and human rights crisis right now, and I really wanted the music to draw more attention to it. So. Sometimes I'm singing about love, and sometimes I'm singing about family, and sometimes I'm singing about really important pressing social issues that um, we need to address. You also have a, a kind of a day job as a policy social worker. I imagine that comes into your music. Yeah, it does. I, um, I've been writing songs since I was a little kid. I literally started writing songs when I was about eight years old, but I didn't start as a professional musician until much later, and so... What I did was really develop a parallel career at the same time. I got a, a social work policy degree, so I have an MSW, but it's in policy and planning and community organizing. And all along, as I've been doing music professionally, I've also had a parallel career, whether it's depending on the time. I did international development work for a number of years, which I, I loved, but then quickly realized that I couldn't be a touring musician and be flying off to various countries and continents at the same time. So I moved to community development, local and state work, and now I'm working part-time doing juvenile justice policy and advocacy. And social justice themes, sociology themes have really always been a part of what I've written about from the very, very start. Well, not when I was eight. When I was eight, I was writing about different kinds of topics and friends and things like that. But since I've been releasing albums, this has really always been kind of weaving in and around what I'm focused on, which is one of the reasons why I'm so at home in the American folk field and movement, because we are a community that really cares deeply about using the lens of the arts and music to shed light on the human condition and the environmental condition, but to try to make things, make things better and inspire ourselves and, and everybody around us to, to be a part of the solution. There's a place in politics and policy for the wonks, but it seems like it's a lot more important to be in the trenches. Yeah, you know, I, I've i spent a bunch of years trying to figure out, like, where's the leverage point? What's the, what's the magic bullet, if you will? What's the, what's the place that's really going to achieve the greatest amount of good? And I've come to the conclusion that it's all important. What's really most important is that each of us plug into what we feel passionate about. I forget, oh, there's a terrific quote, and I don't remember now who said it, but it's, um, it's something like, don't figure out what the world needs and then go do it. Figure out what lights you up. It might have been Marianne Williamson. Figure out what makes you shine and do that, because what the world really needs is people who are shining. For, I'm paraphrasing poorly. But for me, you know, music is really the blood that runs through my veins. And I know there's a place for excellent PowerPoint presentations and the persuasive data and, you know, financial analyses and all of that. And I do some of that when I'm doing juvenile justice policy work. But it's really quite an honor and really a privilege to be able to sing about it and watch and experience people's hearts opening through the arts. I think that Certainly music has the ability to touch us mm -hmm. when we're raising awareness about 
you know, whatever it is, if it's homelessness, if it's children being mistreated, if it's the environment and so on, I think that music can be just as persuasive as some of the more intellectual arguments, but certainly we need those too. So. Kudos to you for this double, double life that you've been <laughs> leading. The work that you did in Latin America and Asia, it's important stuff, but you're working at home now. You're working in the community in addition to reaching really a global audience through the magic of technology with the music. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best fit for me. I loved doing international development work. I wouldn't trade that experience, no pun intended, for the world. I mean, I just really got to connect with such talented, dedicated people. And, you know, human needs and environmental needs are the same. I mean, the, the details are different, but, you know, what is healthy and what is happy for a human being, whether it's Thailand or Ethiopia or Bridgeport, Connecticut, you know, it's really very similar. It's about opportunity and love and respect and and physical health and emotional health and intellectual challenge. And it was amazing for me to learn those lessons very, very early on in my career. And it gave me, no pun intended, it gave me a very global perspective. You know, as an artist, I tend to, I mean, my new record is going to be called Misfit. And probably every artist I know, in fact, for sure, every artist I know and writer and painter and photographer and potters and all, we have this ability to look at the world as, you know, from a higher altitude as outsiders in, in some ways. Traveling around the world, Latin America, Asia, Africa, that early, just really brought it home to me that, yeah, at the end it is about local community development, but, you know, again, also national solutions and, and so on, all of, all of it hopefully coming together in a healthy way. We're talking with Laura Herskovich. She's on the big Saturday, June 4th lineup for Roots on the River. You can find the full schedule online at rootsontheriver.com or look for the posters. They're starting to pop up around the region. And the printed program is going to be out and about and pretty soon to pick up if it's not already. I read that you narrowly escaped law school. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I got in. I was political science undergrad just really determined to get to law school. I'm not 100% sure why, <laughs> um, but I applied to a bunch. I was working at a private firm in Connecticut at the time, got into a bunch, put my deposit down. I think I deferred for a year. And at the time, sort of like now, the legal field was really saturated. Mm -hmm. And I was leaning towards wanting to do social justice law, and those, those positions were even fewer and farther between. And to a person, the attorneys that I, that I was working with really just kind of talked me out of it. That, I mean, they <laughs> were happy for me if I wanted to go do that, but they weren't particularly happy in their own work. Mm. And the work that we were doing at the time, you know, very private practice representing banks and, and other corporate entities just didn't inspire me um, all that much. So I deferred for a year. I thought, well, maybe I'll apply to the Peace Corps. I started volunteering in a local homeless shelter for really, honestly, very purely selfish reasons. I wanted mm -hmm. to beef up my resume so my Peace Corps application would be competitive. And honestly, that work, that little bit of work, literally just serving dinner once a week in a local homeless shelter just changed my life and completely mm -hmm. opened my heart and opened my perspective about needs. And so I decided then and there, instead of a law degree, to go get a, an MSW, Master's in Social Work, policy degree. And the funny thing is there's a, it's a really interesting movie and concepts. There's a, a film that Gwyneth Paltrow did many, many years ago, decades ago even, called Sliding Door or oh, yeah. Sliding Doors. And the film splits into two. Um, in one film, so you're watching two films in one. In one version, she makes the metro or the subway. In the other version, she misses it. And, and you watch her life take two different paths based on whether she makes the train or misses the train. And the really interesting thing is you watch them, her life, her life's path diverge completely for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then eventually she ends up exactly in the same place. She just got there in a very different way. And I feel really strongly actually that if had I gone to law school, I'd still be right here right now talking to you, mm -hmm. going to play at Roots on the River in just a few weeks with a different degree, doing, you know, part-time criminal justice reform, juvenile justice reform, uh -huh. and touring music professionally full-time. 
So I'm content with the decision, and uh, I feel like I'm, you know, following the footsteps of one of my heroes and role models, Ruben Blades. Is, mm. You know, we all have permission to be more than one thing. So these are the these are the two things that I am right now. Well, I think you've made the right decisions. Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple of lawyers around here who they seem to have managed to turn out okay. <laughs> <laughs> The lawyers that I know who live in Vermont are, are happier than the ones who are commuting into New York every day, perhaps. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's loop this back around to the music thing. You were the state troubadour of Connecticut for a while. I was. I was. It's a little-known fact that that position exists. Most people assume it's state trooper and are looking for the car and the <laughs> weapon. And But, yeah, well, the way I always described it is it's the equivalent of a poet laureate, only music. And Connecticut is the only state that I'm aware of in the country that has a state troubadour position. It rotates every two years. There's a very intensive application process. Yeah, it was a real honor. It's just a beautiful way that Connecticut shines a, shines a spotlight on its performing artists. Yeah, it connected me much more deeply to the state. We serve as kind of cultural ambassadors, and happily now I get to wear the banner of former Connecticut state <laughs> troubadour. And I joke with friends of mine who also are in that in that category that we're either true B4s or true but no mores. But either way, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a good family to, to be a part of. I'm very proud of it. That's a great thing that Connecticut is doing, I think. For sure. And it's very inexpensive program, relatively easy to administer. I really would encourage other states to, to consider it. It's a hmm. beautiful thing. So they don't necessarily award uh, an expensive crown that you need to wear. <laughs> I did. I had friends give me an inexpensive crown. <laughs> and yeah, I was very happy to be the 13th Connecticut State Troubadour, which also makes me happy because 13 is my favorite number. And one of my couple, three CDs ago now, it, like, the title is Juror Number 13. Mm-hmm. So, What's the deal with 13? You mean just in general? Why, do I, why am I drawn to it? Yeah. I like to poke at superstition. You know, I have a personality trait that's a little bit probably rebellious, but also a little bit, you know, I made a decision kind of early on that I was never going to, I never wanted to be limited by things that scared me. <laughs> um, and therefore, cultural superstitions I like to really embrace. And um, so, you know, I don't know. It's it's probably cliche, too. Like, I had a black cat. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the number 13. I, I'm a big fan of the underdog. I'm a social worker. And so if the number 13 gets neglected because people are somehow strangely, like, afraid of it, that makes me want, that makes me more drawn to it. So what can I say? I, it's hard. For, I, we need, like, a clinical psychologist to answer that question. Oh. I don't really know. <laughs> and you were on uh, Prairie Home with Gary. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's probably the high, the biggest highlight of my career so far, other than being here today talking with you, of course. Well, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> that was wonderful. And, yeah, that the team at American Public Media and the Prairie Home Companion are just so talented and smart and funny and laid back and super professional. Just, mm-hmm. yeah, that was, that was a, real, a real joy. Um, listen to this for just a second. Why misfit? Hmm. <laughs> because all my favorite people are misfits. They're authentic, original, true to who they are. We belong because we don't fit in. I pulled that off the web. You recognize it? Yes, I recognize that voice. You're doing a Kickstarter campaign for a new album, which is exciting. I'm so I'm so excited about this album. These are really yeah. It's a it's a. I mean, hum, I humbly and hopefully say that these are. You know, among the best songs I've ever written. There's a there's a really wide range. There's some really just fun, playful work. I rewrote the verses to um, "Will the Circle Be Unbroken?" Um, mm. You know, have a song called "The Bravest Thing," and the punchline is that love is the bravest thing to do, because we certainly need more of that. Just to want you know, wanting to help be part of the movement to try to take better care of each other. And, so this will all be under the banner of Misfits. That's the title track. Mm-hmm. And yeah, what I said there in the beginning of that campaign is true. It's true. I, um, yeah, I'm really happy to be doing work that is just true to my heart and true to my soul. And and all of my role models and, and friends and, and favorite people are all kind of in that camp, just finding unique ways to 
be true to our own interests and mm-hmm. talents and values and um, working really hard to improve things around us, whether very, very local within just a family or on boards or volunteering or teaching or in the medical profession. I mean, just, the world is full of just such extraordinary people and there's so much bad news, so yeah. much focus on the negative and the anger and the bitterness and the rancor and just sort of the media's desire to sell itself through bitterness. I find this really boring and really tiring. And so I decided to just like plant the flag in something more positive and playful and, and just as serious and just as intense. And Misfit felt like the right leader of the gang of songs, uh, if you will. So yeah, there's a Kickstarter campaign underway right now. I'm hoping, I'm actually, Roots on the River is my goal. I'm hoping I'll have it in hand in time for for that beautiful festival oh. under the big tents um, in, in just a few weeks. So I would greatly appreciate anybody's uh, support of that. Yeah, just go to kickstarter.com, right, and do a search for Lara, L-A-R-A, and you can guess at the last name, Herskovich. I'm sure the algorithm will smooth it out and you'll find it. You know, I don't know the search engine at Kickstarter very well, but it, honestly, if you just go to Google and search anything close to my name, you will find me, and it's right on the main page of my own website as well if you have trouble finding it. LaraHerskovich.com. Mm-hmm. The Kickstarter thing, I think it's great for independent musicians to basically pre-sale the album. If that's what people you know want to get into it at that level, it's just buying the album in advance, or if you really support uh, the artist or the mission or the music, you can go above that. You have some gorgeous jewelry. Yeah, so there's a terrific uh, jewelry artist and craftswoman named Amy Volchok. She runs a company called Aqua Beat out of New Jersey, and she handcrafted these really amazing pieces, all of which feature the word misfit, and one of which, a gorgeous sterling silver cuff bracelet, features some lyrics from that song, um, which is, if you if you want directions, here's what you do. Go to that stop sign and then go through, which, which um, I sing towards the end of that song. So yeah, at different levels of pledging, there's all kinds of different incentives, and she's she's been just an amazing partner in jumping in and um, really thoughtfully putting putting these items together to help people connect to the being a misfit. <laughs> it's so funny, <laughs> they're. Aiming. I didn't. I didn't know that it was the right title. You know, everything in art is always a leap of faith sure. and a leap of vision. Um, and you never know how it's going to land. And it's really fun to watch and hear at shows. People really resonate with, like, wow. You know, I hear a lot. I'm a misfit too. Like, absolutely. So yeah, there's lots of jewelry that says misfit. You can proudly, like I do, you can proudly wear the banner of. Of misfit, <laughs> and as as we're recording the campaign, just launched like days ago, and and people are starting to get involved, and it's great to see. Yeah, it just launched. Yeah, I think it was three days ago, and it will be going in total for thirty days. So there's time. Um, there there will still be time, and and it'll close, and hopefully allow me to produce all of this stuff in time for Roots on the River. Cross fingers. I'm torn between two songs to go out on, either Let Us Begin or You Are Beautiful. Which do you think? I want you to confuse everybody and play them both at the same time. (laughs) Put one in the left speaker, put one in the right speaker, and then people can check. Um, uh, Let Us Begin, sure, Let Us Begin. Let Us Begin was inspired by Dr. King's Beyond the Vietnam speech, and Mm. in the speech he said something along the lines of, Now Let Us Begin. Now let us rededicate ourselves to the long and bitter but beautiful struggle to create a new world. Beautiful. Just for you listeners, uh, a little heads up, I'm going to bury a, a secret surprise track after that because I want, <laughs> I want to hear it. Blah, blah, blah from the Juror number 13 album that Lara mentioned uh, because I love Kalimba and it's just a fun little ditty. Probably an outlier, but... You know, honestly, that has been my most commercially successful song so far. I wrote it. I went off to the Omega Institute to a workshop on improvisation Mm. with Bobby McFerrin. And the whole week was about being out of the box. And I wrote that song there. And it's gotten signed to a cell phone commercial in Eastern Europe. And 
Yeah, so go figure. I don't know if, if it's the outlier or if all of my other music is the outlier. <laughs> I should be going more in that direction. We'll see. Totally looking forward to seeing you play again June 4th at Roots on the River. Thank you, Mark. It's so great to talk with you. Thanks for taking the time. Never give up. Never give in. Never give up. Let us begin. Let us stop trying. And let us do. Let us find inspiration to believe the truth. What it means to be free Take one step, then another, then another Till we reach eventually Never give up Never give in Never give Let us begin Let us find strength From the old railroad Deep underground Deep within Let us begin Stop thinking, blah, 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 my heart unglued. Blah, 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 football. Blah, 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 pack rat. Blah, 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 I did it last time. Blah, 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 do I look fat? Blah, 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 will you still have me? We can blah, 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 blah our whole lives through. Cause blah, 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 I still love to. 
blah, 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 blah with you.